Here are the eukaryotic organelles. Nucleus, mitochondria, vacuoles, cell wall, Golgi apparatus, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, rough endoplasmic reticulum, ribosomes, lysosomes, and chloroplasts. All eukaryotic cells have mitochondria, organelles that transform the energy from food molecules into a form that is usable by cells. Evolution of mitochondria allowed cells to become more energy efficient. It was one of the factors that allowed eukaryotes to become more complex. All eukaryotic cells have mitochondria to convert food into a more usable form of energy for the cell. Prokaryotic cells use the cell membrane to convert food into a usable form of energy. Mitochondria resemble prokaryotes in size and shape. Scientists wondered if these similarities might be a clue to the origin of eukaryotic cells. Photosynthetic eukaryotes, such as plants and some protists, have chloroplasts that convert sunlight to chemical energy. Photosynthetic bacteria use their cell membranes to carry out this function. Chloroplasts are also the size of prokaryotes. Scientists wondered if that similarity in size was another clue about the origin of eukaryotic cells. One more clue, mitochondria and chloroplasts each have their own DNA, their own ribosomes, and their own double cell membrane. What does this tell you about how complex eukaryotic cells came to be? Discuss. Konstantin Marischkowski in 1905 and 1910, proposed the theory of endosymbiosis. Other scientists elaborated on the theory. In 1971, Lynn Margulis, pictured, provided experimental evidence that validated the theory in two articles, Symbiosis and Evolution and the Origin of Plant and Animal Cells. The theory states that two billion years ago, mitochondria and chloroplasts were free-living prokaryotes that were absorbed by other prokaryotes. The mitochondrion was once a bacterium that efficiently converted glucose to a simpler form of energy. The chloroplast was once a bacterium that could perform photosynthesis and create glucose. The theory of endosymbiosis is consistent with the process of natural selection. In each case, the prokaryotes were more successful together than they were apart. At first, they formed mutualistic symbiotic relationships. The mitochondria could furnish the usable energy needed for itself and the host prokaryote. The chloroplast could provide glucose for itself in the host prokaryote. The host prokaryote offered a stable environment for the mitochondria and or the chloroplast. Endo means within, sim means together, bio means life, cis means condition. Endosymbiosis means living together within. Click here to see a video on how we think complex cells evolved. The nucleus formed when a cell membrane wrapped around a chromosome. When taken up by the host prokaryote, the mitochondrion and chloroplast dragged the host cell's membrane around theirs, forming their double membranes and new compartments. This was considered a pretty wild hypothesis at first, but it gained wide acceptance and is now a scientific theory. Like all scientific theories, it is supported by strong evidence. Both chloroplasts and mitochondria have the four structures that all prokaryotic cells have, their own membrane, cytoplasm, a circular chromosome, and ribosomes. They also reproduce within eukaryotic cells. Over the past two billion years, chloroplasts and mitochondria have become completely dependent on their hosts. They can no longer live freely. All eukaryotic cells are dependent upon mitochondria and all photosynthetic eukaryotic cells are dependent upon chloroplasts as well. Their relationship has changed over time. 